Hey, what is up you guys? Since my birthday is this Sunday, the 21st of March, I thought it would be a fun idea to make a list of 30 books I want to read before I'm 30. I'm turning 23 on Sunday, which I honestly could not remember my age last week. I was trying to remember, I was like, am I 22 or am I 21? And I honestly could not remember. And I had to do like 2021 minus 1998 to like actually work out what age I was because for some reason my mind had went blank. I guess the last year of my life has just like <laughs> disappeared, but you know. Anyway, um, I am doing a live stream. Obviously, if you're watching this in the future, this doesn't really matter, but um, I'm doing a live stream this Sunday on my birthday, the 21st of March at 7 p.m. UK time. And it'll just be me and my friends hanging out, doing some reading sprints and just chatting and it'll be fun, hopefully. I've never hosted a live stream before, so this will be my first one. I'm a little bit nervous, so I would love for you to join us if you can. I don't know the other time zones, but it is 7 p.m. UK time and there is already a scheduled event on my channel. If you go and check that out, I probably will transfer it to like your own time zone. But yeah, I'm very excited for that. So I would love for you to join us and let's just get started with this video. If you do enjoy this video, please leave a like and please subscribe. And also definitely let me know if you think any of these books are like not must reads. I don't know, like let me know your thoughts on these books definitely. So let's just get started. So this list, quite a lot of them are from the Goodreads first page of their top 100 classics um, list. I have actually read quite a lot of the books on that list. I was quite impressed with myself actually when I was going through it. But I just, you know, want to read all of the big classics if I can. There's some of them I skipped, I can't remember which ones, but there were some of them I'm just not that interested in. Like maybe in the future I will probably get to them just because, but refer right now, I was like, mm, I don't know. But yeah, a lot of these books are from that list and then there's obviously a few that are not, that are just like some other books. Most of them are like a bit older though, there's not really any more recent books because I feel like a more recent book, if I want to read it, I will just read it. Whereas like classics and stuff, like sometimes depending on like what they are, it takes a while to get to. But anyway, the very first one, some of them I have a lot to say, some of them I don't. The very first one is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I have seen the most recent movie of this and I really enjoyed it. And I know it's quite an easy classic to read, a lot of people say it's good for like beginners so I should probably like fly through it but I don't know, it just doesn't s grab me that much. Like I do want to read it but it's just not one that I would ever like prioritise which is why it's on this list because <laughs> I'm sure in the next seven years I can find some time to read it. The next one is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck and I loved East of Eden, I really want to reread it and Of Mice and Men is actually more famous than East of Eden I think, I think in America you guys like study of mice and men in school maybe i'm not sure but i just know that i will probably love it since i love east of eden and before i reread east of eden i should probably read this but you know i just i actually really am in a mood for rereads this year which um it's not good because my physical tbr is huge but you know the third book is fahrenheit 451 by ray bradbury and again this one has actually been on my physical not my physical on my like Goodreads 2 read list since I joined Bookshop at the start of 2019 and I was really like hyped to read this and I was about to start it once so I think I got it no I, I was in the library and I was holding it in my hand and then for some reason I just never actually picked it up but it is a dystopian and I am making my way through the classic dystopians right now I've read 1984 obviously and I just read We which was a Russian one and I'm going to read Brave New World next and then Fahrenheit 451 as kind of the next step in that list, so um, I do want to read it. I don't know, I think it's quite interesting, but I've heard it's a little bit complicated to read, but then also like we was complicated to read and I didn't really mind that, that being a part of it, I don't know. I should probably just get to it. There's another classic dystopian um, further down the list, but not yet. So the fourth book is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. And honestly, this is kind of a placeholder for just more Charles Dickens in general. I have like five Charles Dickens novels on my physical TBR. The only book I've read by him is Great Expectations and then I read a short story collection of his of like short ghost stories but I've not read any of his other novels so I've put A Tale of Two Cities on this but to be honest that is kind of a placeholder for just like Charles Dickens in general I need to read more. Book number five is The Count of Monte Cristo by Ale Ex Alexandra Dumas. I definitely just pictured butchered that, um, Alexander, I don't know. But um, yeah, this is a French classic. This is mostly here because when I was doing my French classics, or not, just my French books recommendation video last month, this one kept coming up. And for some reason, I was like, mm, I'm too scared to read it. I was like, you know what? 
it keeps appearing on every like French books list, like every single one. I need to just see what it's about. So I put it on here. Hopefully in the next seven years, I will get to it. Well, I know I will, but yeah, this one intimidates me. I think it's quite a chunky book, but I'm sure I'll enjoy it. I've, mm, who is it? I feel like someone has this as one of their favorite books. I feel like maybe it's Jennifer Brooks, but I don't, I don't know. It's someone's favorite book. Um, number six and seven are The Odyssey and the Iliad by Homer. I have not read any of the ancient classics. I feel like I really should, but again, they really intimidate me. I actually do own The Odyssey, but they really intimidate me because I don't even know what to expect. Like I know they're like more epic poems and I don't know, they just scare me a little bit, but I need to just get over my fear. This could honestly also be titled like books that intimidate me. This is kind of like the same last, like the reason these books are on here is because some of them intimidate me. Some of them I just haven't got to, but yeah, a lot of them are because they're quite chunky and intimidating. Um, number eight is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Again, big chunky book. Um, I'm reading a lot of Russian books next month and I'm not going to get to that <laughs> next month, but I definitely maybe should get to it this year because I really do enjoy Russian literature. Books nine is technically three books and it is The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. I know he, he originally wrote it as one book, but they get published as three books. So I put it as like one book, but yeah. Lord of the Rings, epic fantasy. I do really enjoy fantasy. I just for some reason never feel like picking up Lord of the Rings. I've never even seen the movies. Like they just doesn't appeal to me that much. And I don't know why because I do love fantasy. So I don't know, I really should. And then number 10 is The Hobbit by G.R.R. Tolkien. This one is much easier to read. This one's a ch uh, children's book. But again, I don't know, it just doesn't really appeal to me. I actually did see the first Hobbit movie and it was so boring, but I've heard that, you know, the movies were a cash grab. Like they made three movies out of like a tiny short books, but yeah. 11 is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky probably butchered that as well and this one is the one I'm reading this next month okay I'm saying it now this is not April TBR but I am saying it now I own Crime and Punishment and I'm just gonna do it because for this list there's 30 books I have seven years I need to read about four-ish books like it's like 4.2 books per year so Crime and Punishment is gonna get read this year next month and you can hold me to that Number 12, War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. This one again is just purely, it intimidates me because it's so big. My friend TB is actually hosting like a read along right now, but I just was not in the mood for War and Peace this year. Maybe later in the year, maybe. We'll see. Um, 13 is 1Q84 by Har Haruku Murakami. And I just read Colorless Tsukuru Tazaki. Um, I've been practicing my pronunciations for my Japanese video but um I really enjoyed it I just finished it last night I gave it five stars so I really want to read more about him 1Q84 um was the one I originally wanted to start with and then my dad owns books because I think it's split into like books one and two time come together and then books three come separate and he owns two copies of book three but no editions of the other books for some reason but yeah I thought this was going to be kind of intimidating but after reading Colorless Sukuru Tazaki and loving it I definitely want to read this. Hopefully, I think this one as well, um, I'll get to soon because I'm really in the mood for like more of Murakami's books right now. 14 is Emma by Jane Austen and then 15 is Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I have read Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion. These ones don't intimidate me. It's more just that I didn't love the other two Jane Austen books I read and I kind of swore off Jane Austen, but it's been over a year now, I think, since I last read one of her books and I'm ready to give her another chance. And I think I'll probably go for Emma because I, I know the story more. I've seen the most recent movie adaption. I love Clueless. So I think I'll maybe go for Emma, but I actually own Sense and Sensibility and like a really nice edition. So we'll see. Um, Those don't intimidate me. It's more just like, I don't love Jane Austen, but I do want to read more by her. For some reason, even though I don't love her, I kind of do want to read all of her books just to say I've done it. I don't know. Um, number 5, 16, I keep saying um in this video, sorry. Number 16 is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. This one, again, doesn't intimidate me, I just never get to it, but since I'm reading all the big dystopians right now, I hopefully will read this one this year as well, after, I need to read Brave New World, and then uh, Fahrenheit 451, and then I think I'll read The Handmaid's Tale. But, yeah, I know it's really good, I just have never made time for it. 
Number 17 is Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy and I just recently read my first Thomas Hardy book and I really enjoyed it. I really loved it actually, I gave it five stars and I want to read more by him and I know this is his most famous book so that's why I put this one here but this one again is kind of a placeholder. Same as Charles Dickens where I just want to read more by Thomas Hardy because I am really like in the mood for more of his books now that I've actually started and read one. Number 18 is North and South by George Eliot. Again, I own this physically. I hopefully think this one will get to this year as well because I, the edition I own it in is like the Penguin popular classics, which I want to unhaul all of them. Um, so I'm basically going to read this just to unhaul it. Oh my god, I just choked. Um, but yeah, it's kind of thick, but I've heard it's really good. It's about the Industrial Revolution. It's kind of like Charlotte Bronte's Shirley, which I didn't love, but um, I think this one will be better than Shirley, to be honest. Number 19, this is kind of leaving the classics now for a minute, is It by Stephen King. Oh my god. What do you even say about it? It is too long. Like, I know for a fact that it's going to be too long. That's going to be my number one complaint. It's just going to be too long. It's too uh, meandering, but I still want to read it. I've only actually seen... I've seen the very original movie, like the TV one. I've seen all of that, but the like most recent movies, I've seen part one. I've never actually seen chapter two. But yeah, it is just... I know it's going to be too long, but for some reason, I still want to read it. Number 20 is The Stand by Stephen King. I've heard this is one of his best books. I have also heard this one is just like... Well, same as his best books. It's just like peak Stephen King. Like A lot of people say this is his um, their favourite book by him. So I'm going to give it a shot. I know that it links into the Dark Tower series, which I'm currently reading, so I should probably read it this year as well, while I'm reading the Dark Tower, because I think you should read The Stand before one of the Dark Tower books, but I don't know which one. But yeah, The Stand, what can you really say about it? <laughs> um, 21 is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, and I want to read this one because it is a multi-generational family story, and I love those. East of Eden, um, Wuthering Heights, I just choked again in my own words. Both multi-generational family stories, I really loved them. I think there's another one I read, but I can't remember which it was right now. But yeah, multi-generational family stories and like how the sins of the parents affect the kids. I love that and I've heard that this is what this is. So I really want to read that. 22 is On the Road by Jack Kerouac. I read Maggie Casty, hated it. I think I gave it two stars, probably deserved one star. But I've heard On the Road as like very good and very influential. So I want to give Jack Kerouac another try. I don't know if Maggie Cassidy was just the characters that I didn't click with or what, but I want to give On The Road a shot just to see what's about. 23 is Beloved by Toni Morrison. I just recently read Song of Solomon and really enjoyed it, so I want to read more Toni Morrison and this is her most famous book I think, so I want to get to it. 24 is Dune by Frank Herbert. This is kind of the same as um, whatever the fantasy, oh Lord of the Rings. It's like I want to read it and I know it's like a staple of the genre, although I think this is more sci-fi than fantasy. Um, it's like a staple of the sci-fi genre, but it's so thick, it scares me a little bit. Um, I've heard the writing is like kind of dense, but I think I will get to it. Maybe not this year. Even the movie, actually, I don't know why it's even there because the movie doesn't even appeal to me that much. Like, it's not where I want to read the book to watch the movie because the movie doesn't even look that good to me. Um, it's just I want to read it because it's such a staple. 25 is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I just feel like me and Sylvia Plath are going to get on. The only thing I read by her was her poem Daddy and I really love the imagery in that. I'm not really a poetry person but I really love the imagery. I want to read more of her poems as well but The Bell Jar, I just feel like I'm going to click with it. Um, it seems like everything that like 16 year old me would have loved. You know, like depression, like romanticised maybe a little bit. I don't know. Um, 26 is Inferno by Dante. And to be honest, maybe the whole um, full Divine Comedy, but specifically Inferno really interests me. I love religious imagery and religious stories and religious art. I'm not religious, but I love all that. So I want to read Inferno. And then in the same vein, 27 as Paradise Lost by John Milton. Exact same reason. I just love religious kind of stuff, um, like stories and things like that. So I want to read Paradise. 28 is The Monk by Matthew Gregory Lewis. Again, it's kind of, this is also kind of religious. I started this, I think I got to like page 40 and I had to DNF it because it was too dense. I could not understand anything that was going on. So I want to give it another shot. 29 is also another one I've DNF and that is Catch 22 by Joseph Heller. This is my dad's favourite book. So I want to give it another shot and try and get through it this time because it's his favourite book. So I feel like I probably should, but I really struggled to get through it. Um, I DNF'd it like halfway through. 
And finally, number 30 is The Left, the left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. I love Ursula K. Le Guin. I've loved everything by her I've read, which is only two books, but I want to read all of her books. I really want to read FC. I have it. I need to read it. But The Left Hand of Darkness is like her most popular sci-fi book, so I want to read that. And I just also want to read everything by her. So that was the list of 30 books. Um, if you have thoughts on any of these, let me know. There were some other ones that almost made their way into here, but I kind of chopped them out at the last minute. Like the old man, uh, the old man and the sea by Ernest Hemingway. That was on here, and then I kept looking at it because it just kept catching my eye, and I was like, "Why is this really on here? Like, I don't even know what this is about." And I just kept putting it on the list because it was on like the classics list, and I was like, "I don't know." But yeah, if you enjoyed this list and this video, if you enjoyed this list, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, please subscribe, please come to my live stream this Sunday at seven p.m. and wish me a happy birthday. And yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Have a little heart. I don't know what I'm doing right now. I don't know why I'm so crazy with my hands today. Um, I don't know. I'm rambling. Okay. Goodbye.